Yeah, I'm excited to uh, join your webinar next month or this month, by the way. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Brent, I just put the two together. You sent me the link uh, some time ago. I, I, I recognize your name. Yep, that's right. Yeah, please let me know if I can do anything else to help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Tamara. Can you hear us? Good morning. Yes, I can. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Almost. It's Tamara. Tamara. There we go. I always yes. want to make sure I get that right. Thank you. And Tamara, what's your what's your role? I'm the Director of Educational Services for Fowler Unified. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for hopping on um, with me today. We're excited to get this started for our administrators. Our superintendent has had some experience with it because he's been a mentor through AXA and I believe that um, they've utilized that program. So he showed me what he was doing with his mentee and uh, we decided this would be a great thing for, for our administrators to do. Awesome. And Tamara, how many people are you expecting from Fowler today? Is it just you or more joining us? It's just going to be me. There's a lot going on right now. So <laughs> that sounds good. It's a crazy time of the year for sure. That sounds great. So what I'm uh, going to do is after this meeting, I will send you a link to this. Um, we'll spend about an hour together. And then you may share this with whoever you want. Thank you. That'll be great. Okay. Awesome. And um, uh uh, Brent, would you introduce yourself first, please? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Brent Colson uh, with School Sims. I am a client experience specialist. So uh, if you need any assistance with um, your account, uh, any assistance with the portal, which we're going to go over this morning, um, anything you know uh, that, that you have an issue with or anything that you need some help with, I hopefully will be a good starting point for you to, um, to get the ball rolling. And hopefully if I can't resolve a problem immediately, hopefully I can track down an answer for you very quickly. Great, nice to meet you, Brent. Thanks. Amber, Thanks for being Amber, here. Would, Amber, would you introduce yourself next, please? Yes, of course, hello. Uh, we worked together a little bit just in the beginning here and um, got you set up. So I know that you were looking for your professional development meetings with um, your principals, assistant principals and instructional coaches. So um, I was just the liaison between you and Brent and David here who will onboard you. So also let me know if you have any questions moving forward. Perfect, thank you, Amber. And Dr. Mason, would you introduce yourself please? Hello, Tamara, and everybody. Once again, I'm Dr. Patrice A. Mason, and I am a partner of School Sims, which is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal um, use for any school district. And I'm also the CEO of a company where I support superintendents in their districts to decrease staff turnover rates. And uh, I use a proprietary system in doing that and often able to uh, implement School Sims so that we can make sure that the needs and the vision of that district is met. Wonderful, it's nice to meet you. you Good, well. and Tam Tamara, would you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit more about you as well. Great, so I'm the Director of Educational Services. I've been in this position for, let's see, about the last year and a half, right before the pandemic, I came on. Um, before that, I was an elementary school teacher and an academic coach, and then an interim principal. And so um, we, in the past, the district didn't really have an educational services team. And so we're building that up now. We've pulled off some of the um, coaches off of the sites and um, pulled them into the district so that we can better serve our students. So we're in the process of restructuring. Um, and, and we have two new principals who will be coming on next year, a high school principal and then our alt ed principal um, will be new as well. So this is a great time for us to jump in and I have the support here. Awesome. All right, thank you. Uh, so my name is David DeYoung and I'm the chair of the Division of Educational Leadership at the University of South Dakota. So before this, I was a third and fourth grade teacher. So I was an elementary teacher as well. And then I was a principal and then I was a superintendent for eight years in Iowa. And um, when I came to 
uh, higher ed, I was at a conference in San Diego and I attended these uh, simulations, like a breakout session about these simulations. And I, in just 10 minutes, I was like, all right, this is the best tool out there for current and aspiring leaders. So I started using them. I was kind of like an early adopter of them. And since I started using, since then, um, uh, they had 14 simulations in the library and now they have over 30. So you can kind of see in about five years, that's how much it's grown. And then um, in the last five years, I've actually facilitated hundreds of these sims to thousands of school leaders. Uh, I've flown out to California multiple times to meet with people and um, happy to teach you what I've learned from all the different people that uh, I've been training about these. So this hour is just for you. So uh, we wanna help you get off to a good start and just kick open the doors to communication if you have any questions for us. So let me start with that. So what are your goals for using the simulations in Fowler and what questions do you have for us? So uh, we are restructuring our leadership meetings. We have monthly meetings. In the past, they've been more of uh, informational and we are switching that. We're moving away from that and really digging into the learning part of that. And the educational services department is what's going to support that. And so uh, one of the pieces that we would like to do is the, the school leadership piece um, with, with these simulations. So we want to have, uh, we want to utilize this tool is part of our um, our monthly meetings and the trainings that's going to go into that. And how long are your meetings, your monthly meetings? Um, they're, we're going to schedule them for about a half day. Oh, half day. That's, that's yes. really good. Yes. And um, each one of these simulations that I found take about an hour to go through them. So some of them are, you know, maybe as, as low as like 40, 45 minutes, but an hour is about what you should budget for this. Now, if I was like a, you know, a director of educational services or assistant superintendent or superintendent, leading these simulations is a really good idea because what you're doing is you would be building capacity within your admin team um, and talking about this, why you make the decisions that you make. So, I mean, there's no better professional development than this because you know, either you leading them or your superintendent leading them, they're like viewed as the, like the instructional leader or like the leader of leaders uh, for those monthly meetings. So good job for you for stumbling on these and, and checking them out. So great. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brent, would you talk to us a little bit about the portal? Yes. And, uh, Tamara, actually, just within the past probably hour, I set up a, a user account for you. I'm not sure if you saw that email yet or not. I did. Yes, I did get that. Okay, wonderful. Well, so that will allow you to log into our site at schoolsims.com. When you go to the homepage in the top right hand corner, you'll see the login button. And that'll take you to a screen where you can enter your email address and the temporary password. And that'll get you right into our dashboard. Um, the navigation on the left um, will be the, the areas that you can, can access. Uh, the top left, actually, you'll see your own name there, and that will be a link where you can um, access your profile, and you can go in there and you can actually change your password uh, from the temporary password that we created. The, the link will be in the top right corner there with the little key that says change password, and you can take care of that right there as well as updating any of your other information. Um, you can actually view the simulations right from the portal. Uh, the bottom button on the left, view simulations, will take us right to the library. Each of the simulations will be listed there with a brief description and introduction. You can scroll down through and as new ones are released, uh, as David mentioned earlier, we do have several more in the pipeline and we're trying to, to add to the library uh, as often as possible. Uh, when the new ones are available, they'll pop right in here and you'll have access to them immediately as soon as they're ready. Uh, we also have the ability to filter uh, on the left hand column there, you can filter by uh, NELP standards or PCEL standards or protagonist, you can, as the library continues to grow, uh, this will be a lot more helpful as far as narrowing down uh, the areas of interest that you're looking for and you can get right to the SIMS that are appropriate for, uh, you know, whatever uh, occasion you're interested in. 
Um, right now, you are the only um, person with administrator privileges on the portal for Fowler. But if you have anyone else who um, will, if it would make sense to have control over the Sims, maybe sharing links to them, uh, we can easily add others uh, to your account. Uh, anybody who's simply going to be viewing the Sims, uh, we wouldn't need to necessarily set up their own account. I'll show you in a moment how you can share the simulate links to the simulations with them. Um, we would consider anybody that will be helped facilitating the simulations, they would be for our purposes considered an administrator and we would want to set up a separate account for them. But that's something where you can just let me know going forward. Uh, maybe it would make sense to have just you as the only administrator, but if there's somebody else that makes sense, then we'd be happy to do that as well. And you can just reach out to me anytime and, and we can set that up really quickly for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think our superintendent would like access to that as well. Perfect. Yep. And I do have his email. So I will go in as soon as we're done here and I'll set him up as well. Um, and then you guys should both be in good shape. But as you continue to grow and, and refine your team, just let me know at any point if, if you'd like to have someone else with access there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anybody that does have the administrator privileges will be able to share the Sims. Uh, if you're going to simply be doing them um, in, in your monthly meetings uh, and not sharing them asynchronously, this may not be quite as important, but I'd like to show it to you anyway. Um, if you go under the Sims Management tab on the left, you'll see another list of the simulations that are available. And then there's an envelope icon in red to the right of that. So if you see a Sim that you'd like to share, uh, you simply click the red envelope icon and that pulls up a window. If you'd like to share more than one, you can add different Sims to the top window. You can add the entire library and share them all at once, or you can just add you know, a few, one or you know, two or three at a time. And then we can actually enter an email address then in below that. So you can, um, if you wanted to post it on a page or a learning management site or something, you can send the email directly to yourself in which case you'll get the email and there will be a, a hyperlink that you can copy and share. Uh, this is a, an example of what the email will look like. So it'll have an introduction and then the link is right there. If you'd like to share them uh, with others to use asynchronously, you can send the email directly to, uh, to anyone else. Or like I said, if you wanted to copy the SIM to, to post it, you can just send it to yourself and then it will have a link there for you to use. This is an example of the landing page that uh, you're taken to by clicking on that link in the email. So we don't, once um, you're, we require passwords for you to log in as an administrator, but once we create the links to view the SIMs, we don't uh, require passwords at all. Once someone has the hyperlink, they can get directly to this page and they can watch the SIM at their convenience. Uh, we do have a list of the links then, should you choose to share them under uh, links management, there will be a list of all the links, who you shared them with and which simulation you shared. If you get to a point where um, you know, you're at the end of a school year or the end of uh, an area where it's no longer uh, applicable, you can simply click on the red trash can icon and then that will disable the link. Uh, we also have the ability to create reports. If you're interested in seeing, you know, uh, who viewed the sim, how many times, or things like that, you actually can enter a range and you can actually create a report that you can view to keep track of the sim usage within your organization as well. Um, that's my quick introduction to the portal. Um, if you have any specific questions, I, I know I went through it kind of quickly, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions now. Uh, or you can reach out to me later. Um, but if not, then I'll turn it back over to David. Um, I probably will have questions once I get in there and dig into it a little bit, but not yet. But I definitely will reach out if, if those come up. That's great. Thanks. We did go to a lot of effort to try to make it as user friendly and intuitive as possible. But please, if you have any questions at all, just let me know at any time and I'd be happy to help in any way possible. I'll turn it back over to David then with some more information on the facilitation. Perfect. So Tamara, who will be facilitating the Sims and Fowler? Will it be you or your superintendent or both? It, it could be either one of us. Okay, perfect. All right. So this is what I've learned as the facilitator. 
So if you have a large group of participants, I usually like to lead them through one simulation and I keep them all together. So okay. for example, one time I had 150 people in a room. I had one projector, one sound system, one computer. And what I did at each decision point is I would break 150 people into 75 groups of two, just like that. So you can make a big group really small, very easily with the SIPs. Okay. Now, if you have a small group of participants, like two to five, um, there are different ways to facilitate this. Like if you have Zoom, you can bring everybody together and then you can send them into like a breakout room of two to five, put the link in the chat feature and they can self pace themselves through the simulation on their own. Like they're that easy for a small group to like self lead themselves through it. So that works really well. Now, when you are synchronously together in your monthly admin meetings in Fowler, what you want to focus on is the depth of the conversations. You're going to set this all up just to get them talking about why they made the leadership decisions that they made. And if you give them enough time, they'll start pulling in like, you know, past experiences, like their biases, like their values, and you, you'll get really deep quickly. Um, so uh, as the facilitator, the less talking you do, almost the better experience your leaders will have uh, going through the SIM. Now, asynchronously, I'm not sure if uh, you will do this, but don't be afraid to send a link to like the members of your admin team in between your meetings and say, hey, between now and the next time we meet, I'd like you to go through the simulation. When we come together, we're gonna talk about what you learned. And what you're gonna hear is different than what you hear synchronously because they'll come to that next admin meeting and they'll be like, you know what? I went through that simulation three or four times because I just wanted to see what would happen on those decision points that I might even not make in real life, but I wanted to see what would happen from those decision points um, with the decisions I wouldn't make. And there's a lot of learning in experiencing what would happen in a bad scenario. Um, there's just as much learning from that as there is like, when they're synchronously, they try to answer in a way where they don't look like a fool in front of your superintendent or their peers. Okay. That's how they're going to answer when you are synchronously. I'm sure of it. <laughs> so, so just know that there are different advantages to different ways. If you, it's just, they're, it's, they're safer and they're willing to take risks asynchronously, but you lose the depth of conversation. Now, uh, uh, at Zoom, you can use these with Zoom really, really well. And in fact, I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to send you like how I use my polls and breakout rooms as well. Great. All right. Now, when you set this up, like when you're introducing the simulation, what you say matters. So I will say something like, all right, we're going to take about an hour and we're going to go through a simulation together. And this is meant just to give you an experience. And we're going to talk about why you make the decisions that you make. So let's have fun with it. And if you set it up in kind of like a light, um, risk-free uh, tone, um, they'll be like, okay, I'll give you an hour to do this. Now, if you don't learn anything from this like one hour together, this is like my one big thing, okay? So because for two and a half years, how I facilitated the Sims is, they would say all simulations begin with like three to five minutes of context, usually a narrator or a video telling you who you are, what the problem is in your school, and then you get to your first decision point. And I would always open it up for the room and I would say, all right, what do you think? A, B, C, or D, what would you choose in this scenario? And then the room would get really quiet. And then somebody would, like my extroverted leader would come in hard and they would say, I think it's letter C. This actually happened to me two weeks ago. And this is how it played out. C is the right answer. And then the rest of the group, no matter how many people I had, they would say, oh, yeah, I thought it was C too. And I was talking to my wife. I'm like, there's no way that everybody thinks that it's C. There's no way. 
So what I did is I made them commit to their response before I allowed them to talk to anybody else. Total game changer on how these sins are facilitated. There are three ways to do this. The first is the easiest and is what I'm gonna have you do today. I'm gonna say, take out your pencil or pen and on a scratch piece of paper, write down A, B, C, or D, which option you want to do. Because these simulations are those choose your, they're like those choose your own adventure books that we read as kids. Like if you wanna do this, you go here and you can't go back on these sims, right? So, you know, like the first, you know, decision point, it leads to four different videos. So it's, you know, committing to an answer matters because they, it, you go through the sim differently. Now, uh, my wife is a first grade teacher and she's like, well, why, I'll just make card tents for you out of card stock. So we set them up there. Like if you want B, then set up B. And what I found when people were doing that is they, I, it helped me because then I could see in the room. All right. We have a bunch of B's, a couple C's and one D. All right. And then I could facilitate it better. Um, but people start peeking at their neighbor's letter. Like they are crazy curious about what their peers choose as a response. So it's fun to see, um, but that's what happens. Now, another way, uh, if you're good with technology, something like Plickers or Menti, you can hand out Plickers cards and then you can scan the room and you get an immediate bar graph on what they chose and it's anonymous. And what happens when leaders see that not everybody thinks like them, they're floored. They're like, what? How is, not, how is this happening that not everybody thinks like me? And that's normal. So, and that really gets them like, oh, I want to talk about this because they think their answer is right. So if you learn nothing else, make them commit before you let them talk. All right, next, if the narrator doesn't read it out loud, um, just read it. Um, because you can't assume that everybody has good eyesight, they have a good computer connection if that's how you're using them, or you can't assume that everybody processes as quickly as you do as the facilitator. So just read it out loud, it keeps everybody together. Here's my next big thing. After you make them commit to their answer, all you say is turn to the one person next to you and talk about what letter you chose and why. That's it. After you say that, you can step back and you leave between two and eight minutes for them to chat about that decision point. And that seems like a lot of time to give them to chat, but like we talked about, that's where you're gonna build that leadership capacity that you want to in Fowler. So the, the last thing I just want to share is don't share war stories. Like, <laughs> and your superintendent is going to have maybe more than you, but like politely tell your superintendent, like, hey, let's make this all about them and let's let them share their stories and process. And because they'll, they'll start saying things like, oh, this happened to me. And, and because they're so relevant, these, these simulations. Um, so just make it all about them. Now next, does Fowler have a like a, a principal pipeline or like an aspiring leadership um, group or anything like that? So no, funny you should say that because the last three days we've really been talking about that. And as you've been talking, I've had the light bulb go off like, okay, because we, we want to start building our teacher capacity uh, to get them to be leaders for us. So it's yes, the light bulb's okay. going off right now. <laughs> Perfect. So, you know, the Wallace Foundation, they basically come out and said principal pipelines work. And um, if I were you, like I would use these simulations as the basis for these and how, so I'm a product of a principal pipeline. I was a third grade teacher and they said, hey, you'd make a good principal. Well, you come to monthly meetings on Wednesday mornings, one hour before school begins. I said, yeah, I'd do that. And um, you could use these simulations for the basis of this and you would build leadership capacity. Teachers love seeing these because there's, there's a mystery of what happens when the principal's door is closed. And that mystery, it, it, it kind of uh, brings it out into light 
um, for them. So, all right, here we go. This is what I would do if I were you. In September, I'd use academic goal setting. Basically, you're a principal that has working with a veteran teacher setting his goals for the year. And he just tells you what you want to hear and to get out of your office. And this gives you a really good opportunity to be an instructional leader as a principal. In October, I'd use dress code. It's the easiest sim, in my opinion, to facilitate. It only takes 45 minutes and it has a powerful leadership lesson. You help this teacher. There's complaints about her dress code and the way she teaches math. And you have to decide how to address that. In November, I would use special education. So you're a new principal and you have a parent that comes to you and says, hey, the nurse said that I can have a one-on-one -on -one aid for my child with diabetes. And then the nurse said that you do this for other people in the district. So you work through the superintendent, find out that you're discontinuing that practice and you kind of find yourself in a mess that you have to solve it. In December, I'd use new teacher evaluation. So you're a principal evaluating uh, Ms. Goodworth. And based on your decisions, this is like her stress meter and it goes up or it goes down. But what's crazy is like half of the people in your group will want to decrease her stress and be like, okay, we need to work with her. You know, she's a new teacher. And the other half will be like, no, no, no. We need to increase her stress. So she changes, right? So you'll, you probably have leaders and Fowler that think both and those are two very different ways to lead through the evaluation process. In January, I'd use the girls basketball coach. Um, this is good because you're a high school principal and a parent complains about a coach and it gets to the media and the superintendent's involved and you have to solve it confidentially. In February, I'd use disruptive teacher, my all-time favorite. I'm going to show you this one. It's awesome. In March, I'd use cultural competency, my second favorite, just because it's so relevant right now. And you have a popular teacher that everybody likes, but what happens is um, there are some major issues. And when you push back, he comes back really hard uh, you, because you're a new principal. Cyberbullying is what I'd use in April. It's a bunch of little mini scenarios and you gotta use your uh, dis district policies to solve this. Also, like uh, this is an example of a feedback report that's at the end of most simulations where you can have people, if they do them on their own, they can print out the feedback report or save it as a PDF and send it to you. And you, this is a good time to reflect because we know with adult learning, you just don't want to like drop off a cliff at the end of your presentation. You want to have a little bit of time to summarize the key points and reflect a bit. That's when you know the, the learning kind of sticks. Uh, in the May, I'd use end of the school year because you have a myriad of issues coming your way. And what you realize is you, you have a foot in next year and a foot in this year's problems, and you have no time to do anything else. So that's what I would do if I had an aspiring leadership group. What questions do you have for me as I switch to uh, showing you a set? Uh, no, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's right in line with what we would like to do. And I appreciate you laying that out with the recommendations month by month, because we'll use that. That's helpful. Great. Yeah. If I was leading them, um, that those are the exact ones I'd pick. And it's so easy because, you know, my recommendation is if you're facilitating this, if you go through the simulation once or twice, you'll be ready to facilitate it. You don't, don't, um, spend time going through every response and every answer, you know, they all have a main storyline. And even when you deviate from that, it brings you back to the main storyline based on your responses. So that's reassuring. All right. So here's the main uh, site and here is the, um, simulation that I'm going to restart here. So this is the disruptive teacher. Now, when we get to uh, the decision point, I'm going to have uh, Patrice and uh, Tamara or uh, Tamara um, answer on these. So be ready.
As in real life, you will not be able to go back in time during the simulation. There is no back button. You may only move forward. If you need to exit the simulation and return, you may restart or continue from where you left off. For a description of the buttons below, select the Help button, which will display an interface overview page in a separate browser tab. Finally, keep moving forward by selecting the Next button to the lower right. All right, we're gonna, here are some of uh, the actors and actresses. We have Kim. She's, we're going to meet her first, right? You're a principal. Kim's going to come into your office, shut the door, and share a concern that she has about Diana, who's not very nice. And she doesn't look very nice in that picture. And then during the meeting, we'll meet Brian Beck. He's a part of our team, our collaborative team. And we'll also meet Christy Lopez, who's a part of our collaborative team. So there's the narrator. In this scenario, you're the principal of Brookside Elementary School. At Brookside, the less experienced faculty members tend to be special educators, and there's a divide between the veterans and the new faculty. You were concerned about the progress of students with diverse learning needs, so during your first two years at the school, you successfully established collaborative groups amongst the teachers with the intention of increasing student achievement. You've also initiated a co-teaching model where special education and regular education teachers are teaming in classrooms. Though still in the early stages, the collaborative groups have developed norms such as treat colleagues respectfully, make positive presumptions, notice your impact on others, and so on. Establishing norms seems to have helped the school climate, but more effort is needed. You're concerned that the staff still does not always treat one another in a professional manner. Your goal is to create a more positive tone in the school. Though still in the early stages, the collaborative groups have developed norms such as treat colleagues respectfully, make positive presuppositions, notice your impact on others, and so on. Establishing norms seems to have helped the school climate, but more effort is needed. You are concerned that the staff still does not always treat one another in a professional manner. Your goal is to create a more positive tone in the school. It is now late spring and state test results indicate students in disaggregated groups are failing to make adequate progress. One of your go-to teachers, Kim Capania, a special education teacher, is assigned to co-teach with a sixth grade teacher, Diana Walsh, who is particularly unpleasant. Kim is a teacher leader who seems well-grounded, highly professional, and someone who gets it. Moments before she is scheduled to facilitate the sixth grade collaborative team meeting, she asks to speak with you and then arrives in your office. All right, we're going to meet Kim. Thank you for meeting with me. I'm sorry I am so upset, but I've been trying to decide if I should even come to you about this. Now I think I've waited too long, but you must know, Diana is very tough on the kids. She has her favorites, but with some kids, she has such an attitude. She's sarcastic and she calls them lazy and she's making some of them really shut down. I do all I can to build the kids up. But we're supposed to be teaming in her classroom. She's making that impossibly hard. On top of that, she's just so rude to, to some kids and to me. How will you respond to Kim's concerns? Make a choice from the following. One, thanks so much for opening up about your concerns, Kim. What are your perceptions about what is going on? Or two, I've seen some of the same issues with Diana. I'm glad you feel comfortable coming forward. Tell me more about what you've been seeing. Or three, Kim, you need to understand that she is trying to motivate kids that are falling through the cracks. Some of those kids just need the kind of tough love she is delivering. Or four, I hear your concerns. The problem is that if it's just you, it is a he said, she said situation. I haven't heard from others who share your concerns. All right, so give me a thumbs up when you have, just write down first option or A, B, C, or D. Thumbs up when you've committed to your response, like I talked about, so write it down, got it? Okay, so what I do now as a facilitator is I launch a poll, and I created this poll over a year ago. And so go ahead and, and if you put A, you know, mark first option, B, second option, 
C, third option. All right, I see that you voted. So I'm gonna end the, now as the facilitator, I have to decide, am I gonna share those results right away? Or do I wanna kind of leave you in suspense and send you into a breakout room to talk? So I'm gonna share the results for this one. So you can see that both of you chose A, right? So since we have such a small group, uh, would one of you be willing to share like, why, why did you think A was the best answer? Tamara, you're our guest today. The floor is yours. Okay, so um, when we're working with our teachers in situations like that, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we are listening to them and hearing um, them speak clearly, giving them an opportunity to um, say all the things that they need to say. And so that we can really digest what that is as a leader. And then uh, yeah, the other options just to me were not the right thing to do for various reasons. Yeah. Go ahead, Patrice. And I, I, I would agree with that and offer as well, uh, like Tamara was saying, really that we want to make sure we're creating an atmosphere where conversation or rapport can be built, but at the same time, balance that without adding or creating an environment where toxicity and undermining our colleagues, um, where that's not what we're doing. So I think that in this case, clearly, as she and I both um, voted, there's only one, one choice here. <laughs> so 90% of people choose A on this simulation. I've done it many, many times. So Let's, the, the second uh, response, it's not 90%. So let's see how Kim responds here. I'm here now, so I may as well just get it all out. I know a lot of kids really like her, but I think she is so demeaning. She gives me such nasty looks sometimes and She'll stare at me, so I feel she's undermining what I'm trying to get done in class. Sometimes she won't even give me a table or a place to work with the kids. She treats me like I'm not a professional, like I'm not a teacher. I've seen her treat other staff that way, too. She needs to be more respectful. Anyway, I'm sure I've taken too much of your time, and I know we both have to get to my team's collaborative meeting. I didn't mean to dump this on you, but I just didn't know what else to do. All right, if we had a dollar for every time somebody said, I didn't mean to dump this on you, right? So this, <laughs> this is like, oh yeah, here we go. This was written by somebody that's experienced this. So let's see, how are we gonna respond to Kim now? How will you react to Kim's thoughts? Make a choice from the following. One, Kim, this is really troubling. Your work is so important, and I'm concerned you aren't being treated respectfully. You definitely aren't taking too much of my time. Is there more? Or two, it seems as though you've been thinking about doing something about this situation. Addressing your concerns directly with Ms. Walsh could be a good start. Do you think it would work if you reminded her about our positive assumptions norm? Or three, Kim, thank you for sharing how uncomfortable you feel when working with Ms. Walsh. Since we're close to the end of the semester, do you think we can finish the school year and perhaps address this over the summer and into the fall? Bad answer. Don't or choose that one. four, let's go to the meeting. We can continue this conversation later. Thanks for sharing with me. All right. Give me a thumbs up when you have your answer. Okay. I'm going to launch the poll. So now what you'll notice is I'm relaunching the same poll. So go ahead and vote. Yes, two votes and it's different. Yes. So as a facilitator, I'm always like, oh yeah, here we go. So now I'm not going to show you what it is. I'm just going to, I'm going to send you into a breakout room and I'm going to let you talk for uh, just one minute. So talk about what letter you chose and why. And after a minute, I'll give you like a 30 seconds to wrap things up to come back. So it'll go really quickly. But I kind of want to give you the experience of like, okay, what does it mean to feel in a kind of breakout room? Let, Patrice. David, yes. Let me make sure I could be started. Do you think you're? Uh, yeah. So, okay. Mine is definitely number two. I want to make sure, I think that I might have clicked on option 
see, but my answer is definitely the positive assumptions norm. Okay. What, what was yours? Because I don't, uh, Tamara? My, mine or, was also the same. The oh, one, the positive assumptions. <laughs> cool. We're right on together. Right? All right. <laughs> well, we threw a wrench in your plan. <laughs> no, no, you didn't throw a wrench in my plan. So I'm still going to have you talk about it just to experience the breakout session here. Sure. So go ahead and talk about it. For what letter you chose and why. You may go ahead and join the room. Once again, Brent, it's just the two of us. Oh, you're on mute. How you been? Everything going well? Yeah. Good. Good. I have baseball coming out of my ears right now. Same here. Yeah. We are just finishing up the school season, um, okay. but we the summer season just started last night. So uh, okay. it, it is almost year round. How's yours going? It's going well. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we start games for my boys next week. And then my 12 year old, my oldest son, I got him into umpiring because he can do nine, uh, nine and 10 year olds. Yeah. So, yeah. So every night we'll have three or four games every Monday through Thursday. Let me close the rooms here. Uh, Monday through Thursday till like mid July. That's awesome. And I think they should probably make every coach umpire at least one game and he'll have a lot more compassion for, for dealing with that. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, I'm pretty intentional about helping him, you know, transition from like boy to young man to man. And this is part of like building responsibility with him. Yeah. I, that, I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I sent, uh, I closed the breakout rooms. They have, you know, here's the, you're back. That was too much fun, David. <laughs> that was fun. That's good. I always love the breakouts. <laughs> yes. So I just wanted you to kind of experience it because, you know, when you're facilitating them, it's different than, you know, when you're, I, I wanted you to see it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. All right. So B, now let me tell you something about one third of the time people choose A. And they have the same reason uh, that, um, that we talked about earlier, where I want to really listen to everything that this person has to say, and I want to dump their emotional bucket completely because I don't want them talking to somebody else about it. I want them to talk to me about it. You know, my friends that, say, that choose B, they're like, why, why do we have positive assumptions norms if we're not going to use them? And I can't go around as a leader solving everybody's problem. Like I'll get weary, like not tired. I'll be weary solving everybody's problems all the time. Solve them on the, the lowest level. And about one third of the time people say D and they'll say, you know what? I just, um, you know, we have a collaborative team meeting coming up and we need to get to that meeting. Otherwise it's going to be awkward when we walk in late. Everybody's going to know what we were talking about. Or people choose D and they say, you know, I just need more time to, you know, process this and analyze. My analyzers are, are choose D. So, I mean, those are pretty good reasons for all of those options, right? Mm -hmm. You can at least see all those points yeah. of view. Okay. But you chose B. Let's see how, let's see how Kim responds to B. I don't know about talking to her directly. I had enough trouble deciding to come and see you. <sighs> Somehow I don't think it's safe to deal with her in a direct manner. She strikes me as the retribution type. If I thought we could work this out reasonably, I would have tried that. <sighs> this makes me really uncomfortable. Okay. She sighed a lot. <laughs> what will you say to Kim? I don't mean to make you uncomfortable and would never push you into something you don't want to do. Let's get to the meeting. Or, I know it would be hard, but I found the best outcomes are when the parties who are directly involved try to work things out. All right. Give me a thumbs up when you have your response. Okay, you got it, Patrice. Got 
got it, Tamara. You're really debating there. I like it. Relaunch in yeah, the poll. It's getting harder. <laughs> All right, go ahead and vote. Nice. Share the results as fast as I possibly can. Because we have two, we have both A and B, right? <laughs> Yeah, I knew we were going to differ here. And, and yeah, I debated because I could see either way, but that's the value of the sim, right? So tell me why you thought that you would differ. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Even though I've just met Dr. Mason, I, I feel like, like that's kind of her, she, her focus um on through our discussion on trying to give people the opportunity to work things out on their own and i completely agree with that that's why i, I debated about it however um i think i would need to think on it some more that's probably why i would say let's go to the meeting and i'd want to continue that conversation um later to get some more information all right, now two thirds of the time people choose B and one third of the time they switch to A because, you know, they talk about how like her sighing and like using the word safe, yes. you know, is like, all right, you know, something's changed here. Um, and if we choose B, the simulation goes to Kim resigning from your team, the simulation's <laughs> over and you have to start from the beginning, oh. which evokes lots of emotions and it happens two thirds of the time. So, you know, some people are like, the simulation is wrong. You know, and other <laughs> people are like, it really gets them um, uh, like going on this because there isn't really a right answer or a wrong answer because right. we haven't even met Diana yet, right? So I'm gonna choose A just out of the sake of time so we don't have to start over. Uh, and I'm gonna try to get us to this meeting here. You walk to the conference room to join the sixth grade collaborative meeting. All right. So now remember, you are in this meeting with them. So when they look at the screen, they're looking at you as the principal. Okay. Thanks so much everybody for arriving on time and bringing your assessment data. We're going to continue using our norms and get started. Our norms are number one, respect consensus. Number two, share and record ideas. Number three, notice your impact on others. And four, maintain confidentiality. Sixth graders are making such great progress, but we uh, need to look carefully at the kids who are struggling to make sure that they're also keeping up. The math scores let us know we still need work. All of our students with learning disabilities are below the cut lines. No kidding. Well, who didn't think this would happen when they jammed all those kids into our regular classrooms? Wasn't it better when the special ed teachers focused on those kids in their own classrooms and just let us teach our kids? After all, they're the ones not making progress. Your kids are driving all the scores down. It's not just the sixth grade either. All the other teachers agree with me. The fifth grade teachers say that all this mainstreaming is the reason the sixth graders come to us unprepared. I'm not sure about the special ed issue, but collaborative time has been powerful. And I, for one, wish we had co-teachers or even teacher aides support in our rooms longer, even all day. But we all know that's unrealistic. Can we look at the last unit review and zero in on items that seemed the trickiest for the kids? I heard the other great levels are using rubrics that the kids fill in to assess themselves. Could we see an example of those? Sure, let's bring on the rubrics. Another new initiative. And how is letting kids grade themselves going to help us? Name one kid who doesn't give themselves an A. We all know it's really about our teaching. If I can't cover the content, how can we expect the kids to do well on the tests? We already don't have enough time, especially now with all the learning disabled kids in the class who don't want to pay attention or even try. The tension in the room grows as Diana continues to demean the special education students and teachers. Diana, I've actually had a lot of success with the rubrics. The kids love them. 
and you'd be surprised, they hardly ever give themselves the highest ratings. I'd be happy to share what I'm doing if it would help you. I certainly don't need any help from you. I've been teaching since before you thought about becoming a teacher. You could learn a thing or two from me. One of those things being that rubrics are such a waste of time. I tried using rubrics the last time someone was pushing them and the kids just didn't know what to write. It's obvious where things break down. If the special ed teachers, and I use the term loosely, could just figure out where things are breaking down for their kids, then they could help those kids. My kids will do just fine without the rubrics. I do happen to have some sample rubrics from the fifth grade. So we can see how the kids use them to identify what they know. Uh, sometimes they go back to make corrections on their own after they think through the rubric. I have to agree with Christy. It's amazing how well it works. Well, I hope the fifth grade team starts doing something right because the kids need to come to sixth grade better prepared. So many kids this year who had Jada co-teaching in the classroom with them last year. And I'm talking about the normal kids in the classroom. It's like they skipped school all year. All I'm doing is playing catch up and with hardly any help. What do you think you should do now? Although Kim is leading the meeting, I should intervene at this time. Or Kim is leading the meeting. So it's best if I allow the discussion to continue. All right. Now, I always stop right here and I'm like, how many of you have ever worked with a Diana in your educational career? Raise your hands, right? Okay, so you're nodding and giving me a thumbs up. So this is the time where I actually deviate from the simulation and I'm going to be like, we are going to take plenty of time right now to talk about your experience with a Diana. And I'll send them to like for five to eight minutes into like groups of, you know, just two is what I always prefer because then you get the most people talking and processing. And, you know, that's very powerful because the simulation creates that holding space for to talk about what we really need to talk about as leaders. So even though we're only like a little over halfway done with the simulation, I'm going to actually stop the simulation right now just out of respect for your time. There's, there's never a good time to stop a sim, but I just, you kind of get, you kind of know how to facilitate them now. Cause you just repeat that cycle of having them commit and then talking with one person next to them. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that the power will be in those conversations. So I do like that you offered, um, both means both synchronously and asynchronously because I see value in both of that and both of those methods. So that's something that we'll definitely uh, take on moving forward. Yeah. And asynchronously, what I do is I send myself an email and then I get that hyperlink and then I just send that hyperlink to, you know, whoever I want to send it to. So, I mean, you could mix, like you could mess with everybody's email addresses, just copying and pasting them in there. And then you can track like, okay, this person did this three times. This person did it once. You know, if you want to see that, then that would be valuable to send individual ones out. But if you're not going to track it, you're just going to talk about it, send out one link. Then they don't need a pass password, username, simple. Perfect. That'd be easy. Good. So awesome. uh, what other questions do you have for me or for us? So Dr. Mason, can you just finish that conversation we were having about how you use it and how you rolled it out? Right, well, um, with other tools that I didn't necessarily find to be as proficient and as innovative as school sims, but very much similar to school sims, is I would take both what I offer and coincidentally uh, really focusing significantly on the development of aspiring leaders or the leadership development of, of, the, of the district. And I work to really prepare the mindset because that's what I found with many aspiring leaders. It was really massaging their mind and preparing them for really what is this field that you're really walking into and the, the plight of it. Um, so I work with them on that five-prong system 
And from there, what I recommend is we go in with a school sim so that they have, um, as David shared, they now have a, a support on uh, say January, February, March, where it's each month. And what we do is we go back to the five prong system that I taught them and we relate those individual scenarios so that we can understand why are you making those leadership decisions? What are the implications? What are the accountability? What is the legal implications? Mm -hmm. um, what are the funding implications? What does the politics say? And you know, what are even the strategic plan? Oftentimes when we enter into, I share with them, oftentimes when we enter into a potential conflict, one of the ways I found um, as a, um, you know, even in this scenario, I love so much because it reminded me of my last principal job and working alongside um, superintendents. I had a lot of Dianas, but one of the ways that, you know, I would teach those aspiring leaders to break that up is when they go back to that five prong system and they can apply that to each of these scenarios, which would then of course, in many ways become live experiences is, you know, they can become neutral and say, what is our goal here in our district? What is our strategic plan? And I've even been able to somehow sometimes use the PBIS. What do we, what, what is it that we're teaching our students? And if it's that we're teaching our students that, then what are our expectations of ourselves? Um, so there's just so many phenomenal layers to do it, but I always start with that five prong system that really, really supports them in a strong foundation first before going into scenarios such as this one. And I have found that it to be a very, very strong, and as David mentioned before, um, an incredible, incredible tool um, that allows the school sims to be as beneficial as possible for the entire district. Does that support your answer, your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, and it's okay with you. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, I just wondered um, for any additional follow-up questions, I'll put here my in the chat um, my email. Thank you. I appreciate that. One thing, uh, Tamara, if you are like interviewing principals this next round, you just hired two of them recently, you know, part of the interview process, run them through a simulation on their own and then have them reflect with you about what they've learned. That would tell you a lot about them as a leader. And, you know, I have some colleagues that use these in superintendent searches and, you know, it's actually made the difference, um, you know, in that process. So this is, and another uh, client that I'm working with, a school district of over 25,000, they use these simulations just like you're going to do. But what they realized is um, their admin team is not documenting situations um, the same across the district. So what they did is they ran them through a simulation and then they're like, okay, now document you know, like professional documentation about Kim and about Diana. And then we're going to calibrate as a team and we're going to compare what you saw as documentation to what I saw as documentation. And you can get your admin team just on the same page because all the variables are the same, right? Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Lots of different ways to use these things. Yes. Don't just put them in a box is what I'm telling you. Got it. And for uh, Dijong, that I absolutely agree with that and to to add to that um tamara the scenario that was given a moment ago with the the teachers having a difficult time that's a wonderful opportunity to pull a school sims that is fitting for that building and it can be a very non-threatening way to really start to have some professional development so that that type of discussion or that interaction doesn't become toxic toxic for the environment, but that's what's so phenomenal about school sims and the tools. When you pair it with, you know, um, the right implementation, it can have incredible transformative impact. Absolutely, I could see that. Yes. <laughs> All right. What other questions do you have for us? Um, I think that that's it. Really, 
I'm going to need to take some time to process through. And of course, I'll want to go in there and I'll tinker with things because I mean, it looks fun. <laughs> I had fun doing that. So I'm sure that um, questions will pop up. But as they do, I'll just reach out to um, Brent and um, we'll go from there. That sounds like a good plan. Awesome. All well, right. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so much. And thank you, Patrice, for, for giving me that insight as well, too. That's very helpful. Yeah, give, um, shoot me an email so we can stay connected. Let me know how I can also be a support as you get going with this amazing tool. You're going to love it. Awesome. I definitely will. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Mason, can you stay on the line?